All right, let's take another look at the data class, and this time we're going to look at it in QML. I have a skeleton of the basic interface we had, which is the name, species, animal, and fed. Special note on QML, there really is no concept of a date time picker at the time of this recording. Super, super special about that. All right, so let's take a look. Our QML is very, very basic. First things first, we're going to import the class we used from the previous project. So let's go into 15.4, grab this, and we're on 15.6, paste it in there. And let's right click and let's add existing files, add the animal implementation and header. Give it a minute to think about. All right. You'll notice right off the bat, it doesn't know what Q concurrent is. So you guessed it, we have to go in here and same thing we have to say concurrent. And then it should know in C++ land once it's done parsing that what Qt concurrent is and we can now use our data class. Because we're in QML land we're going to be working primarily with these Q properties which is why I put these in the original file. Remember quick recap if you're watching these in order this is probably boring but Q property is needed because QML has no concept of these public functions, so it won't see the getters and setters. It only knows signals and slots. So it's only going to see these guys here. Now the properties act as kind of a bridge between that. So now we can say we want a property, a string that has a getter and a setter, and is going to have a signal that's going to let us know when it's changed. This is what's extremely cool about QML is that you can have this property system in place so you can get automatic notification of when a value changes and it updates your GUI for you. It's actually really cool. And special note, if we do a to file from file, this is all concurrent, meaning it's asynchronous. It's going to run on a separate thread and we don't have to take care of any of the threading complexities. We covered all of this in, I think it was video 15.4 when we actually built this class. But just in case, from file to file, both of them get a queue future that calls queue future concurrent run on this object and it's going to call concurrent IO with a path and a read only or a write only. This queue future is going to be set inside of the watcher. So we're going to say, hey, go do this. I'm going to worry about it in the future. And then watcher, tell me when it's complete. That's really what we're worried about here. All right, we're not done yet. So we've got a little bit more C++ we're gonna to have to do in our main. This is what I would consider probably the only real downfall of QML. In order to use this, we need to include the header file because it's a C++ class, and then we need to register this with the QML engine. Otherwise, our QML code will have no clue that that class even exists. So let's jump in here and let's say QML register type and we're going to register an animal. And then we've got some special nonsense we need to do. And I call this special nonsense because I absolutely hate the way this is set up, but I understand why they did it. So we need some sort of ID. So we're gonna say com dot company animal And that is basically our namespace. And then we need a version, major and minor, followed by the actual name that we're going to use inside of QML. Now from here, what we can do is we have a namespace. So if you made an animal and I made an animal, as long as they're different company names, or if you make a completely different namespace altogether, those two will be treated differently. Special note in Q6, which is coming out soon. I've heard, not confirmed, but I've heard when we do QML, the versioning doesn't matter as much. And what do I mean by that? Let me go ahead and grab this. We're going to jump into QML. Let's go ahead and import that. So I'm going to say import, and we're going to import that animal, and we want the major and minor version. Now you notice in QML, we have to have the versions in there. I've heard in Qt6 it's going away. It's going to be something like that. 
and it will try to load the newest version. All right, so now that we've imported our animal class, we have to actually use this. So the very first thing I'm going to do is go all the way down to the bottom of this file here. And I'm going to, you guessed it, say animal. And if you're wondering how I'm getting this name, we define this in our main here where we said we want this to be the name we're going to use for the QML object type. So there's our animal. And I want to say ID animal. And now we want to hook into the signals. So I'm going to say on finished. And then I'll have something. And then we're going to do the same thing for on air. Probably help if I was outside of that. There we go. And now I want to know when the component on complete is fired off. That's when I want to call my internal function here called update GUI, which is going to have the animal name, animal species, animal age, and all that fun stuff already in it. So this is how we're really going to update right off the bat here. So I'm going to say update GUI. So as soon as our component is loaded, we're going to load with all the default values there. And you guessed it, pretty much the same thing for finished. Now, if we have some sort of error, I want to do it kind of the QML way, and I'm going to say console log. You could pop up something to the user, but for this, I'm just going to say console log, whatever the message was. And there is our animal in all of its glory. Now, you notice I already have some of this stuff sprinkled in. I just kind of left the non-important stuff in there, but we're going to go all the way to the top, and we're going to see what we need to put in here. So first things first, we got our import. We've already created our object. Now we're going to go down to our button saved. All right, right here. This is where we need to, you guessed it, pop in our setters here. So what we're doing is we're working with the cute property system here. And QML is a little finicky when it comes to dates. So I have this var d equal new date, and then we've got it the text fed dot text. So really, what we're doing here is we're going to say animal name. Now, where are we getting these? If you look at this, it looks like we're calling a C plus plus getter, but under the hood, we're saying animal dot name species age. And if we flip into this header, you're right, it's the property name species age. This is what I mean by QML doesn't understand public. So if I try calling, let's say set species, let's try that. I'm going to just do it right here. I'm going to say animal. And let's say set and nothing happens. IntelliSense is not even going to help us out because it just doesn't understand what it is. So we have to use the cute property system. All right, now that we've got our save button in there, we have our clear button, which is going to have the animal clear in it, and then our load, which is the other important little bit here. And I'm going to just, you guessed it, clear out our GUI. And then we're going to call our open dialog. Now, the important part really happens in these two dialogs. I've got save and open, and these are non-visual, and they fire off when we click those buttons. So I've got a path here, and I'm just saying, go ahead and get the file we want to save and I'm going to say animal and I want to file. Now you may be going, now wait a minute, I thought you just said it can't find those setters because it can't read the public functions. Well if we look at animal it is a slot to file from file. So anything you want QML to be able to call directly needs to be a public slot. All right, so now that we've got that nonsense out of the way, we can just simply plug it in. It becomes ridiculously simple. So I'm going to say save is going to go animal to file. And then open, you guessed it, is going to be animal from file. And we're going to put that right here. Bang. Very simple, very easy to understand. The rest of this is just boilerplate code, boilerplate code that just loads all the animal stuff in there. Let's save and run. 
All right, so immediately we know it worked because it's loaded all this stuff up. And let's go ahead and say Rango. Rango, what is he? I don't know. He's just a, a big fat dog is what he is. This is my wife's dog. He's just a big fat dog. And we're going to say he's 10 years old. We're going to save this. And let's call this Rango1.txt. And we can clear this out, do whatever. We can even close the application, rerun it. And let's go ahead and click load. And there's Rango1. We're going to click open. Let me pull this up so you can see it. And then Rango, our big fat dog with his age and everything deserialized the way we would expect it to. So I know we kind of whipped through a lot of the QML stuff. Again, this is not a course on QML. This is a course on design patterns. And what we're really hyper focused on is how to make a data class and work with that class inside of C++ widgets and QML. Now the specifics for QML, the takeaway for this video is when you're in QML, you have to work with the Q property system if you want to interact with getters and setters. That being said, you can also work with slots. Now you may be inclined to say, hey, I will only work with slots because I hate the Q property system. Don't do that. You're going to run into all sorts of issues here. So really what's going on, let's look at this here. When we call the open buttons, clicked, it's going to call the open dialog. And this is going to say animal from file. Now, what's happening here is we're saying animal on finished update the graphic user interface. And then we're just calling those getters back. You can do, and I haven't done it in this example, but what you can do is full out property binding. So this updates automatically. So for example, let's copy, let's comment that out. And let's go ahead and load this. I'm going to say Rango1. Notice how it didn't load. It's because we're not doing cute QML property bindings. That's a totally separate subject. But if you wanted to do that, you have everything at your disposal because we have the Q property system in there. So quick recap. We made a data class. We've used that class across the console, across the widgets, and across QML. And we've talked about a lot of the pitfalls. The major thing to really understand here is that I.O. is dangerously slow for graphic interfaces. QML, it's extremely vulnerable because QML, we tend to run these things on embedded devices, which are much slower than your standard desktop application. So if I was running this on, say, a Raspberry Pi with very little RAM and there's a bunch of other programs running, and the IO is already completely taxed, and then I go to load this file, we could lock up this interface unless we're doing it on another thread.